Lift up our hand in the presence of God. I want to share with you a few scriptures with you. It's gonna God is gonna bless you, but I just want to have an atmosphere of worship and atmosphere of prayer for the next 21 minutes. I want to share the word of God with you. But I want to allow Abba Father to come and saturate our heart and speak to our spirit. It's not by might, it's not by power, it is by his spirit. He needs to be lifted here. He is the reason we got together in this, such a manner. He is the reason. Christ is the reason. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the Now. He is the God of the Now in Jesus' name. He will heal. He will deliver. He will anoint. He will strengthen. He will, he will bless you. He will give you the grace that's needed for your mission. Whether it's in your office, in your business, in your family, in your school, in your diplomatic desk, and anywhere you go, the presence of God will saturate you today. He's going to give you, he's going to quicken like he gave wisdom. The spirit of God is telling me, he's saying he's going to bring that spirit. He has put on Daniel, Shedak, Meshach, Abednego. He has put them in the place of position, but he has given them the wisdom. He has given them the anointing to lead the nation. Some of your diplomats, God is speaking to you today. He has put you in an assignment. He has put you in a strategic place, but watch, look what the Lord is going to do. He is pouring out his spirit this morning. He will remind you, your man, number one mission is to declare his kingdom. God is going to give you grace. God will give you strength. On that desk, on that table, there are so many people have come and gone. But God says, this is the generation that's going to usher my presence. You are in a strategic place. God is going to give you the spirit of Daniel, which is the spirit of excellence. You're going to say yes to righteousness. You're going to say yes to the anointing. You're going to say yes to the power of God. You're going to say yes to the word of God. And he will deliver the nations to you. Father, I thank you. What an honor to be in such a wonderful international community. This is what heaven looked like. We came from different background, different ethnicity, different uh, 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 situation, educational system. Whatever that might be, there is one common thing like Pastor Mike say, have united us, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Just one red blood. Oh, that blood which was shed 2,000 years ago it made us one, as a one big family. Thank you, Father, as I break your word and share it with your people. Help me, Lord. None of me, but more of you. Less of me, but more of you. Speak to me, through me, to their spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a praise offering. This morning, I want to share with you a little bit for the next uh, 15 minutes. I want to share with you about the principle of success from the spiritual perspective. Like I said, I can give you the seven habits of highly effective people. I learned that when I was in Singapore in 1997. That was my, one of my leadership textbooks. And the one minute leadership, many, many other things. I don't want to insult your intelligence. You can read that on Monday morning. But today, this morning, I want to share with you three most important things that you need in your life. I don't care if you are Catholic, Protestant, Pentecostals, Baptist, Orthodox, whatever. If you believe in Jesus, if you believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, if you are baptized, by his uh, spirit. If the Lord is with you, you need to understand there is three main things you don't need to miss huh? before you are called to go home. Mm. Three things that we find the, the, our text is going to be in, uh, I don't have time to read it, I'll leave it to you. Judges chapter 6 verse 1 to 2, 12. You know the story, the Midianites came and oppress the children of Israel. So all the Israelites were afraid of the Midians. So they're doing wrong thing at the wrong place. One of them was Gideon. The Bible says Gideon, he was threshing wheat in the wine press. Wrong thing at the wrong place. Because of the fear, because of the oppression, he does not know how to do what to do. Therefore, he has hidden from the Midians and he was hiding himself and he was doing those stuff. But the Bible says, God heard their cry. When God heard their cry, he answers. 
He answers. When you pray, God will send an angel. When you worship and give, God will come. God inhabit the praise of his people. Amen. He heard their cry. He sent them an angel. The angels came and say, the Bible says in verse 12, he said, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, uh, Judges chapter 6 verse 12, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. You mighty warrior. Man of power. You powerful man. And remember, he was hiding from Midianites, he was doing the wrong thing at the wrong place. He has identity crisis. Later on, he find in the scripture when God called him, "You are mighty warrior." Who he said, "Who me? Are you serious? I was the least in the ch in tribe of Manasseh. I was the least in my family. Nobody even considered me to give me a, a promotion in any how, any way. But you telling me a mighty warrior, which I have never even touched a weapon." I've never done anything for God. I was hiding for a living. The first principle in your life you don't need to forget about is who am I? The identity issue. People want to be recognized. People want to be acknowledged. People want to be endorsed. Who you are is beyond your title, beyond your degree, beyond your diplomatic mission, beyond your assignment, beyond your educational background. Who you are in Christ is different than who you are in front of your family. King David was a shepherd. No experience in the war front. No experience in leadership. But when the anointing comes, brother... He's looking for somebody who is available, not who has ability. God is looking for availability, not for ability, my brother. God is looking for somebody who will say, yes, even though I'm the smallest in the family. Yes, even though I'm busted, broken, disgusted. Yes, even though I have a broken account. Yes, even I have a past failure. When somebody say, yes, Lord, send me to the nation, he will use you. That's what happened to Jeremiah. The Bible says, who should I sign? Jeremiah didn't say, send it to Pastor Z. He didn't say, here I am. Here I am. Identity. Say identity. If you don't correct your identity, you will be distracted. The enemy will offer you. Your friend will offer you. Government will offer you. Your company will offer you. They will distract you. But when you know ident your identity, like David, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil because your rod and your staff comforts me. Leave alone the palace. Even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Identity. They came to Jesus. And the devil came to Jesus. He said, Pastor Z mentioned it. If you are the son of God, change this bread to, change this uh, stone to bread. Jesus does not have a problem changing the stone to bread. He gave the manna for 40 years. He does not have a problem. He can change one stone to a mountain. Silver and gold is his. The cattle and the thousand hills is his. But the devil brought Try to bring, uh, bring doubt into Jesus' mind. If you are, if you are the son of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we are a new creation. Just like the, the worship team is singing. We are a new creation. Your identity is hidden in Christ. Praise the Lord. Africa, our identity is not our last name. Our identity is not fight. And you know, it, it surprised me always. Africa always, Ethiopia always, we have war. We never even make one weapon. We don't even manufacture one bullet. Something is wrong with us. If you want to fight, fight with a, a knife or a spear, everybody will stop. Because that's a real war. Ooh, fast as the, there is a door this way, right? When I'm done... Make sure I put two, two good ushers, amen. Africa, wake up, right, brother? We don't want to be consumers of weapon. We need to be consumers of the presence of God. 
Karaba Shekaramut. Mekaramo Seatavarasha. Jesus. Jesus, identity. Jesus told the Samaritan woman, if you know who I am, you will ask me the water that you will never be thirst again. Jesus asked his disciples, who did the son of man are? Some said, you are John the Baptist. Some say one of the prophets. And he turned around and he said, how about you? Who am I? The Bible says, Simon Peter rose up and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus turned around and said, this flesh and blood are not revealed to you. My father in heaven who gave it to you. Upon this wreck, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Church was built on the revelation of who Jesus is. Ooh. Ooh. Jesus, help me today. That is a strong anointing here. Lift your hand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your identity is hidden in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. I will do a new thing. Behold, it is offspring right now. Lord, thank you for your blessing. Our identity is hidden in you. Thank you for the responsibility you gave us. Thank you for the education you gave us. Thank you to bless the places that you put us. Thank you for all the experiences. We give you glory, but we will never forget who we are. In Jesus. Tell the person next to you, I'm somebody in Jesus in Christ. Very quick. Number two. That's what the Bible says in uh, Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. He says, and put on the new self, the new person. A lot of people know you because you, you go in the same church, you have the same foundation, you go in the same gathering, you get the same school, the same hangout, same Facebook. It doesn't mean they know you. Put on the new self, the new person. Introduce your new you to you. Sasa, introduce the new you to you. Glory to God. Identity. Say identity. Who am I? Who are you? Who are you? Kenya. I love Kenya. Kenya, when people introduce you back in the days, they don't tell you, my name is Wanderson. I'm in Ethiopia. Oh, come on. In Ethiopia, they say, uh, good morning. Their good morning is English word. In Ethiopia, they say, tenasteling. You know what tenasteling means? It means, uh, let the hells come to you. That tenasteling came from the word, a lot of people were dying during uh, cholera and warshing, you know, pandemic. So people are afraid of their they're going to lose their health or not. So when they wake up in the morning, somebody will say, then ask the link. Oh, then ask the link. And some people say, and then like, how did you sleep at night? I don't care how you sleep at night. I see you. So in Kenya, there is a greeting called, hey, my name is Mimi Naijoa Wandasen, Naokoka, Barikiwe, Mungu Numema, and then Nanyuma. But this is Turgum, and the new translation. My name is Wanderson. I am saved. I am born again. I know my way to heaven. Jesus is Lord. That's how we greeting was. <laughs> Sasa. Praise the Lord. Amen. Africa, who's your identity? The second point I have is, huh? who am I? The first one is, who am I? The second one is, whom am I? The Bible says, you are purchased by the blood of Jesus. It's not our own. When Jesus gave his life, he didn't give it to Protestant or Pentist or certain class. He gave to the world. He is the answer for the world. He is the solution for the world. The world's problem is a wisdom problem. Jesus, the Bible says, is the wisdom of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whom am I? Jesus paid that price for you. I was sharing the morning service. One of the revelations God gave me recently, he showed me the scripture says in the book of Mark chapter 15 and John 19, read it for your reference. The Bible says when Jesus was crucified on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, there were two thieves or people who were destined to die back then. They were hung with him next to him at the right and the left side. 
one of the robbers, he didn't say a wise thing to Jesus. Jesus just ignored, didn't pay attention. That's how you do. When you know your identity, ignore. But the other side, he said, Son of David, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He was futuristic, you know, prophecy. Okay? But Jesus told him, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in heaven. Today. So, what's the big deal about it? Okay? When Jesus was crucified, the Bible says, 3 a.m., I mean, 9 a.m. in the morning, he was crucified at 9 a.m. From 12 to 3 in the afternoon, for three hours, there was darkness. And the Bible say, not one minute late, one minute early, Jesus at 3 o'clock, he gave up his spirit. The Bible says he gave voluntarily. He was not murdered. Ha. He was tortured. He was not murdered, my Lord. He gave his spirit willingly. Those two were murdered. Right? How do you know? The Bible says, Joseph the Armatias came and asked Pilate Peter, Pilate, Pilate, uh, Pilate, Pilate, he asked him, can I take the body of Christ? And Pilate said, did he die? The Bible says he was surprised because his crucifixion was fast, but his death is faster. He was gone. And I asked the question. This is where the revelation is, bro brother. I asked the Lord, why did Jesus die faster than the two thieves? The Bible says in that same chapter 19, they came to the three people who hung on the cross. And they say, tomorrow is our Sabbath, the Jewish custom. We don't want to leave these people hanging there on the cross. We have to take them down and bury them or do whatever they want to do. So when they came to the two thieves, they still and I gave up their spirit. They died. But when they came to Jesus, he was already gone. They didn't even broke nothing on him. I asked the Lord, why? Woo! Jesus promised that thief. You will be with me in heaven today. The Bible says without the remission of, uh, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. So if Jesus have not gone before the thief, Jesus' word will be void. Because Jesus told him, I better go there first. So when you come in, you will have access. If he died before Jesus, nobody's going to receive him. He will be asked for his sin. Jesus said, I will go and prepare a place for you. He said, where I am, you will be also. In my father's house, there are so many mentioned. And in fact, he said, and I will come back. This is not a gimmick. Jesus said, ah, you will be with me today. So you better go in. Some of you have been waiting for many years for the Lord to move in your life. He is already in. He told us this morning. He's already spoken to us through his son. He already done it. He already finished it. What the cross of Calvary? What did he say? Finished. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the kind of God we serve, my brother. He gave up his spirit. So you can come in. You can come in. God created the universe for earth. So the earth will appropriately function the season. The earth was created for man. Five days, God said, let there be light. Let there be animals, plants. Seas, uh, 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 animals in the sea, everything. God created man in his image. God created man for himself. Adam was created on the sixth day. When Adam wake up, boom, he looked at God. God is resting. Adam is resting. They started their journey with rest. That's why Jesus hung on the cross for six hours.
for six, sorry, for six hours. That's the number of men. You are redeemed. Whom am I? I belong to Jesus. I have honor. I listen. People say, you are a businessman. You are an entrepreneur. You are this. You are a millionaire. You are this. No, 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 no. I'm not. I listen voice. Jesus said, my sheep knows my voice. When you listen to the voice of the Lord, your identity is governed by that. My last point is, why am I here? Purpose. Purpose. If you know who you are, if you know whom you are, you need to know what you're doing or where you're going. Jesus, before you do anything, he make you being. He's interested in who you are, not what you do. The Bible says, when he came out of the water, when Jesus was baptized in Matthew 3, the Bible says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus never preached. He never done any miracle. But God is already satisfied when Jesus say, I'm here, daddy, for the assignment you gave me. Just being human is humility by itself. The Bible says Jesus came become a human. God was satisfied. Before even Jesus died, the father approved him. That's what happened. You see Samsung, iPhone, all this product, all the electronics, what do they do? The manufacturers, the inventors, they invent. After that, they go to the processing channel. They go to manufacturing. They test it. They test, they test, they test. At the end, they said, we guarantee this product work. And then they bring, they put that their mark. Pa! Samsung. Pa! iPhone. Pa! Whatever that might be. That's what Jesus said. He called them to him so he can send them to preach. Jesus called you to him first. Then he put his approval. Then you go out and preach. You have the mark of Jesus, not the mark of the beast. You have a shenda. You have his, his uh, fingerprint. You have his anointing. In fact, the Bible says we have the Holy Spirit, which is our seal. Amen. Lift up your hand one more time. My time is up. But I just want to bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for the spirit of generosity. I pray for the glory of God. The Holy Spirit spoke to me as I minister. There are so many people that are going to be arise from this audience, from this nation, from this city to subdue the earth. That's the problem in the book of Genesis. He talks about Babylon. God told us to subdue the earth. Be the leaders. Go around the world. Help people. But Babylon, they start building tower toward God. God doesn't want you to build any tower toward him. That's why he brought languages for confusion. Language is not a blessing. It's a confusion. But we have only one language, the language of the spirit. That will unite us. We have one blood that united us. The blood of Jesus Christ. We have one mission, one purpose, to glorify the Lord. In everything we do and say, let it be for the glory of the Father. Father, I thank you for restoring our identity today. Lift up your hand, maybe stand up in your foot. Lift up your hand and allow the Holy Spirit to touch you. Not only for you, for your mission, for your family, for your spouse, for your children, for your nation. I pray and bless this nation, Lord, from the Prime Minister office until the street of the Addis Ababa. Africa, oh God, this nation, oh God. Send your spirit, send your revival, send your blessing for the glory of your name, oh God. The creation is longing. For appearance of the sons of God and the daughter of God. Nation is waiting for you. A lot of people talk about the young people, the young generation, the new generation. God has not forgotten this generation. You are the generation that will usher in the presence of God. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus today, our identity is hidden in you, Lord. It's not who people say that we are, oh God. We are not even what we say we are, oh God. We are somebody through you because of you thank you for bringing back the memory of the cross our work is finished at the cross of Calvary 
I thank you for my precious brothers and sisters. My dad and mom and face, I thank you for this congregation, for this city, for our continent, for our world, oh God. I thank you for the many nations that are represented here. We have one language, one spirit. The Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. In this last day, more of you, oh God. Less of us, Lord. More of you, less of us, Jesus. We should be proud of who we are in Christ. We're not going to go under the mat, oh God. We will declare your kingdom. Send revival, oh God. Send revival in our hearts. Not only revival, restoration. Let us play, be in the place that you have called us to be. We don't want to do wrong thing at the wrong place and give an inch to the enemy. It's not by might, it's not by power. It's by the spirit of the living God. You have spoken to us. Your word came out of your mouth, Lord. You will restore the nation. You will restore Africa. You will bless Ethiopia, oh God. Because in your mind, all nations have to be blessed. But especially, especially, it's time for Ethiopia, Lord. It's time for Africa, oh God. We want to bless back America. We want to bless back other nation and say, thank you for sharing the gospel to us. But it is now our time, our time to shine and bring the blessing back to our nations. Father, I thank you for this vision, for this mission that you have given this church. Connect us to our assignment. Let us be connected to our assignment, oh God. We don't want to miss the mark. We are all not only doctors, pastors, preachers, whatever status we have. You have an assignment. Oh, hallelujah. And he is asking me, if you have any question, this is a perfect time to ask him right now. Is it healing? Is it deliverance? Is it miracle? Is it provision? Lift your hand and just ask him, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Healing in Jesus' name. Miracle in Jesus' name. Revelation in Jesus' name. So many of you have departed from your dream. God is saying, I'm restoring your dream today. Some of you have been way, way off a track from the vision God has given you. God is saying He's bringing you back today. He sent His servant today to let you know He loves you. He cares about you. It's not finished yet. God is saying somebody is not finished yet. He have not even started yet. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We honor you for what you have done. Our identity is hidden in Christ. We are somebody in Christ. We found our identity. We found our identity. We found our identity. Thank you for giving us family. Thank you for giving us tribe. Thank you for giving us nation. Thank you for giving us language. We appreciate you, Lord. But we are beyond that. We are above that. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you. We are hidden in you, Lord Jesus. You will never leave us, forsake us. Thank you for the purpose you gave us. You called us to bring reconciliation, not between people and people, but people to God. You gave us the anointing of reconciliation. I thank you, Father, for so many officials who are here. They have burden, oh God, for your nation. Civil servants, oh God. They're working in their offices, in their assignment, I ask your grace, your special grace even for them. I ask for our prime minister, our cabinet, our, our state workers, our African Union leaders, oh God. Help them, Lord. It's very easy to point fingers when something goes wrong. But we are the salt. We are the light. We are pulled this nation to you. And we love you. We don't have to be politicians to pray. We don't have to be politicians to talk about policies and procedure. We are sons and daughters of God. Martin Luther King said, a church, the church is a conscious to the government. We are the conscious, oh God. Thank you for young people in this place. Thank you for everyone that came today in this place. And those who are watching online, bless them. 
We love you forever. In Jesus' wonderful and powerful name we pray. Give the Lord a praise offering. Thank you.